Good morning and welcome to St. Ninian's Cathedral Parish. We are glad you have chosen to worship the Lord with us here today on Palm Sunday. This Mass begins with the entrance rites and gospel proclaimed from the church entrance. The Passion from St. Mark is proclaimed. P please feel free to sit at this time. Our presider is Bishop Wayne Joseph Kirkpatrick, concelebrating his rector, Father Danny McLennan. My name is Tushi van der Zande, and together with Gordon Barker, we are today's lectors. Narrator for today's gospel is Cameron Barker. Music ministry is provided by St. Ninian's Choir under the direction of Emery Vanderweel. Eucharistic ministers are Kenny Farrell and Betty Farrell. Altar servers are Ika Suciana, uh, Lauren Chasson, and Nate Barker. Please stand and turn to the entrance of the cathedral. <clears throat> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. peace be with you. And dear friends in Christ, for five weeks of Lent, we've been preparing by works of charity and self-sacrifice for the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery. Today we come together to begin this solemn celebration in union with the whole Church throughout the world. Christ entered into triumph into his own city to complete his work as our Messiah, to suffer, to die, and to rise again. Let us remember with devotion this entry, which began his saving work, and follow him with a lively faith. United with him in his suffering on the cross, may we share his resurrection and new life. Now I invite you to hold up your palm branches. We offer this prayer of blessing. Almighty God, we pray you bless these branches and make them holy. Today, we joyfully acclaim Jesus, our Messiah and King. May we reach one day the happiness of the new and everlasting Jerusalem by faithfully following him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden, and tie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it, and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. And as they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? The disciples told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. And let us go forth in peace, praising Jesus our Messiah, as did the crowds who welcomed him to Jerusalem.
ever-living God, who, as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering, and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The servant of the Lord said, The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I, I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? All who see me deride me, they curl their lips, they toss their heads. He trusted in the Lord, let him save him. 
Let him release him if this is his friend. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Many dogs have surrounded me. A band of the wicked beset me. They tear holes in my hands and my feet. I can count every one of my bones. My God, my God, why? Divide my clothing among them. They cast lots for my robe. O oh Lord, do not leave me alone. My strength, make haste to help me. My God, my God, why have tell of your name to my people and praise you where they are assembled. You who fear the Lord, give him praise. All children of Jacob, give him glory. Revere him, children of Israel. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Therefore God highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. King of endless glory. Christ was obedient unto death, even death on the wood of the cross. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. 
It was two days before the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. For they said, Not during the festival, for there may be a riot among the people. While Jesus was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment of nard, and she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But some were there who said to one another in anger, Why was the ointment wasted in this way? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and the money given to the poor. And they scolded her. But Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me. For you always have the poor with you, and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish, but you'll not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. When they heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, the disciples said to Jesus, Where do you want us to go and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, the teacher asks, Where is my guest room, where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples went out and went to the city, and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, Jesus came with the twelve, and when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him one after another, Surely not I. It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives, and Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all become deserters, I will not. Truly I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said vehemently, Even though I must die with you, 
I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter, James, and John, and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that, if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. Jesus came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. And with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to Jesus at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me, as though I were a bandit? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following Jesus, wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. They took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest, and he was sitting with the guards warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death. But they found none, for many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. But even on this point, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But he was silent and did not answer. Again the high priest asked him, Are you the Christ? the Son of the Blessed One? I am. 
and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him, and to strike him, saying to him, Prophesy. The guards also took him over and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, You also were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I do not know or understand what you are talking about. And he went out into the forecourt. Then the cock crowed, and the servant girl, on seeing him, began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again he denied it. Then, after a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But he began to curse, and he swore an oath. I do not know this man you are talking about. At that moment, the cock crowed for the second time. Then Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival, Pilate used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him! Pilate asked them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole cohort, and they clothed him in a purple cloak, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him, and they began saluting him. Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. 
it was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. And with him, they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you would destroy the temple and build it in three days? Save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabbatani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion, who stood facing him, saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was God's son. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James, the younger and of Joses and Salome. These used to follow him and provided for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When evening had come, and since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if he were already dead, and summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that Jesus was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph bought a linen cloth, and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth, and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joses, saw where the body was laid.
Throughout uh, this Holy Week, the Universal Church relives the central mystery of our salvation, the passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so today we stand at the threshold of the holiest week of the entire church year. And so few words are really needed to inspire us. The waving palm branches welcoming their king in adoration are contrasted by the reed striking the crown of thorns on the head of a king who is being mocked. Today we remember the triumphant entry of Jesus into Jerusalem, riding into the city to the acclaim of the crowds, not on a horse, a symbol of war, but on a colt, a symbol of peace. And the prophet Isaiah told of a servant who did not cover his face from insult and spittle. In the psalm, we heard the words, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And St. Paul magnificently sums up the entire mission of Jesus in proclaiming that Christ emptied himself to the point of accepting death, death on the cross. And this lengthy and painful passion narrative presents us with what Jesus endured for our sake and how it all led to the tomb. Mark's uh, passion narrative begins close to Passover. It's really a rather tense atmosphere. A woman admirer symbolically prepares for his death by anointing Jesus' body for burial. And Jesus said, wherever the good news is proclaimed, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Meanwhile, the leaders are plotting with a disciple about his death. Mark's gospel describes Jesus' death using very usual scripture quotes about God's righteous servant being put to death by evil forces. He interprets Jesus' death in terms of Isaiah's suffering servant. This servant is faithful to God while being tortured, mocked, and killed. Meanwhile, the rulers of the world do not understand the identity of the one they are killing. Jesus was abandoned by those closest to him, betrayed by one of them, rejected by the crowd that favored a mur murderer, mocked by the religious leaders, the Roman soldiers, and those around the cross. Enveloped in darkness and even seemed forsaken by God, but God vindicated Jesus. The veil in the sanctuary torn in two at Jesus' death, standing for the end of the old order. And there's one person at the foot of the cross who sees what others, including those closest to Jesus, miss. Even the women kept at a safe distance from Christ on the cross. But the Roman centurion is there as well. He looks on the dying, crucified victim and declares what others miss. Truly, this man was the Son of God. In all of Mark's Gospel, he is the only one who has come to this insight. So all of the events of the Passion are narrated in great detail. It's quite a contrast, really, to the few words to describe the suffering of Jesus. As we reflect on that, I think we can assume that we'll never be scourged or have a crown of thorns placed on, on our heads or our feet and hands nailed, piercing our wrists and our feet. I think all of us can remember times, though, when we've been betrayed, when we've been deserted, when we've been lied about, misunderstood, and used. So the evangelist presumes all these things will happen to us when we try to imitate Jesus' love and concern for others. I think the most important point to realize is that in spite of his pain and suffering, Jesus never stops giving of himself until he achieves life, the resurrection that results from such giving. Despite our faults and failings, Jesus comes to us once again in the mystery of this Passover, and he wants to teach us and heal us so that we might be transformed and become what we're meant to be, a people who are united 
people of peace, people who seek justice for all, in short, a people who are humbled by sin but dependent on God. In short, a people who are grateful for an opportunity to make a new beginning this Holy Week. So as we ponder all the moments of Jesus' passion, we can't help but be moved with mixed emotion. Holy Week is a very teachable moment for all of us if we allow our hearts to be touched by these sacred events. And so may we join together in celebrating our faith and make this truly a Holy Week for us. Today is a day in which we officially introduce the candidates for First Holy Communion. They've been preparing since October, and they are here today to proclaim publicly their continued willingness and desire to spend time developing a closer friendship and relationship with our Lord and learning how to worship and celebrate the Eucharist as a family of God. So now I invite just the children who are to receive their First Communion, the sacrament to come forward. So just the children to come forward, those who are to receive First Holy Communion. So my dear friends, I understand that you are eager to learn more about Jesus, about the Catholic faith, and what it means to celebrate the Eucharist and receive Jesus in communion. So I'm going to ask you a question. Will you try to learn more about the Mass and how it is essential to prayer and becoming part of this wonderful community? And will you try to participate as fully as possible by singing and praying each week as we gather to celebrate the Eucharist? Yes. That's perfect. And will you try to go in peace, to love and serve the Lord each week by loving and serving your sisters and brothers in school, in, at the home, and especially the poor and the lowly? Yes, perfect. That's great. And parishioners, will you try to pray for the next few weeks for these children and their families who are preparing for First Eucharist? And I ask the parents of these children to please stand so the parents can please stand. So parents, you have brought your children to us at baptism and you promised to do your best to nurture them in the life of Christ. And are you ready to support your children in their journey, bringing them to Mass to celebrate the Eucharist with this community and help your children to learn the meaning of the Eucharist through actions and decisions? Yes. So I call upon all the church gathered here to express our acceptance of these wonderful children gathered as they prepare for their first Holy Communion. Let us now be renewed in our faith as we profess together what we believe. I believe in God, in Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. And on the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he'll come to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Mindful of God's love for us in Jesus' passion, death, and resurrection, we present our needs as we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for God's church during this holy week. Imitating Christ's obedience and humility, she may bring news of salvation of God to all people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the nations of this world and for the leaders that a desire for peace, justice, and freedom will prove stronger than a desire for power with injustice and oppression. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the communities we represent in this church, our places of work, our school, and our homes, that we may love and honor one another as God had blessed us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who are suffering or struggling with any kind of need, that God may bring them the healing, peace, strength and comfort he knows that they need for him. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our young people preparing for First Holy Communion, that they will come to know Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who have died recently. Jeffrey Murray of Antigonish, Francis Duaron of Pomkett, Joseph McDonald of Antigonish and Salmon River, Sister Margaret Landry, Sister of St. Martha, and for the spiritual well-being of all, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of unending mercy, hear our prayers and lead us through this holy week so that with hearts prepared, we may celebrate the death and resurrection of Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever.